Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Star Wars, Age of the Republic, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, and this particular one-shot, yes, it's a one-shot, is called Balance. And, like, do one-shots really need to have a title? The, the fact that they're a one-shot, like, they're called, they don't need a story title. But it's alright, because Balance actually works with this issue, so... Let's get into who actually made this comic book. Oh, and excuse me, guys, if I uh, seem to pick my teeth or you see something in my teeth, had some kind of organic cereal that my wife bought because, you know, organic stuff, she buys organic stuff. And I was hungry, so don't freaking judge me, all right? Anyhow, so <laughs> we're going to have uh, Jody Hauser on writing, Corey Smith on pencils, Walden Wong on inks, Java Tartaglia on colors, VCs Travis Lanham on Letters and Paulo Rivera on cover art. There's a whole bunch of variant cover artists. And uh, yeah, hi. So <laughs> go check all those guys out. I'm not going to make this whole issue about that. So there's this mistress of the trees who um, she's on this planet. She's like in charge of the planet. And these metal master guys, they come up with like the metal clan and they've recruited other people into, you know, or to be a part of the metal clan. Like, hey, listen, we need allies. So um, we need to start cutting down these trees, all of the trees. And it's like, dude, so you're going to cut down trees and they either need the permission of this mistress or they need her blood, meaning they need to kill her. Well, that's weird. And these guys are essentially extremists because, let's be realistic, the exact same thing that um, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn joked. The only time that um, that Ben Kenobi is actually in this, Obi-Wan Kenobi is actually in this, is when he says, Master, you seem in an awful big rush. What happened to diplomatic negotiations? It's like, there's little, there's little leeway in between cut down a tree or not cut down a tree. <laughs> Actually, it's not true. Can we say, can we cut down some of the trees? Not all of them? Do you need all the trees gone? So this was a very weird comic in that regard. But all that being said, um, the character portrayal of Qui-Gon Jinn and the, the vision quest that the Force took him on, the worst part about this comic book is that it's only a one-shot. For one thing, I kind of hope that the story continues at least in some way, shape, or form in the other 26 books. That's right. There's going to be a total of 27 one-shots in this Age of Republic thing. Freaking what? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, maybe these other ones will be really good. Maybe they'll be as good as this one, even. But it is what it is, man. Like, it's just a whole bunch of one-shots. It's like... So now I'm actually starting to think that it is because they they fired somebody. What, they couldn't, like, warn him in advance? Hey, could you please cut down on the Twitter stuff? I'm talking about Chuck Wending in this particular point. It sucks that the guy got fired. And if you think that he should have gotten fired, maybe you, you should get fired. But the point is, people have the right to be angry. People have the right to be angry, all right? If it's not an arrestable offense, it's kind of weird. You're like, well, you're not exactly representing what we want. Shut up. How about that? Represent them. shouldn't have to represent you. These are all private contractors, right? So anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's in, like I always thought they'd be okay with whatever. You know, you, you get rid of one person. Okay, fine. The stories will still continue. Well, apparently not. And again, I'm not an insider. So this could have been planned for a really long time. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm not one of upper management in Disney or, or even just Marvel, all right? So, um, but it is starting to feel like, you know, like 27 of these darn things. What the frig, you know? So, 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 you know, so much for just telling a continuous story and whatnot. And what I was really looking for was a Star Wars story that's set in the future. Sure, fine, maybe do some things in the... Um, uh, the Force Awakens time period, or somewhere in between the last movie and the, you know what I'm saying? There, there's all this time that you could play with, but no, I don't want to do 27 one-shots. But in the meantime, I think I led on to it. I loved this book. I loved this book. The character portrayal of Qui-Gon Jinn was so on point. It was better than his one and only movie appearance in um, Phantom Menace. Wow, this was good. And like, I'm going to let you in on some things, all right? I was a huge fan of Star Wars. Obviously, there's only the three movies. The droids movies don't count. The, well, excuse me, the droids cartoon don't count. 
The Ewoks cartoons don't count. Those two Ewok movies don't count. And F you if you even bring up the idea of the holiday special. I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> but the point is... <laughs> um, like, there was only the three movies, right? And then all of a sudden, Phantom Menace came out. And it was like, oh, there's going to be a new trilogy. The prequels trilogy. And the rest of us, but like, big, strong, tough guys walking around going, Arr. they don't make them like Star Wars anymore. You want to make a good movie, you got to make it like a Star Wars movie. And all the Star Wars, Star Wars, ah, go bite a tree and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, like, we're going to release three new Star Wars movies. And all of us big, tough guys were like, ah! We were so happy. We were so happy. But no, instead, what do they do? They give us that stuff. <laughs> I took off of work, all right? I had plenty of sick days, plenty of whatever. Plus, you know, I was an electrical engineer at the time. So, I, you know, you have a lot of leeway. You got a lot of leeway. I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off on this particular Wednesday when the movie comes out. And it's going to, you know, air at, I think they opened at like 8 o'clock in the morning or something like that. I don't remember. I was like, yeah, me and my buddy Mark, we bought a ticket. We bought our tickets a month in advance. I said, listen, give us the first and the second showing. Make them in the same theater so that we don't have to get up. <laughs> we can just sit there, munch our popcorn, drink our sodas, suck down our candies, you know, I don't know, do crack, whatever, something to keep us away and watch these, th this movie twice in a row because shut up, don't judge me. That's how excited we were for this. No, I wasn't gonna camp out and stuff. I didn't need to, didn't need to. George Lucas, you know, he made it so we didn't need to, but the movies weren't that great. That being said, before the movies came out, I think a week before the movies came out, Liam Neeson, the guy who was actually playing Qui-Gon Jinn, he goes and does some interview thing or whatever where he's just like, yeah, I don't understand these fans buying all these tickets in advance and taking off of work to go and see the movie. The movie's still going to be there. It's going to be there for a month. It's going to have the same showing. So if on day one... You got, you know, 14 showings of the movie. Then on day 30, you're still going to have 14 uh, viewings of the movie. Um, and that's something that George Lucas planned also. It's like kind of money making. At the same time, it's also like I want to make sure fans have equal access to see this movie. If it's going to be packed for the first week or two, then I want to make sure that by week three or week four, they still have the exact same access to be able to see this movie. And God bless his soul for that. That being said, with um, the Qui-Gon Jinn, with um, Liam Neeson saying something like that, it was rude. It was disrespectful of us fans. Maybe he's never believed in anything. Maybe he's never loved anything. Maybe this guy isn't cool enough, all right? As big as he is, as, you know, tough looking as he is, he played Dark Man, he played whatever, you know, it's like, I have a certain set of skills. I will find you and I will make you suffer. I will make you watch Phantom Menace. I don't care what the frick this guy did, okay? The fact is, I don't think that he was cool enough to sit down practically every single day of our lives, like us true Star Wars fans, and stare at a coffee mug or a pencil or the shade on a window or your freaking mom for all I care and just sit there and just try and move it with the force. Okay, because only real people try and do stuff like that. And and we know this. We know this is true. Every single one of us, any one of you who is watching this video right now, you did it too. And you're damn proud that you have. And you make no excuses to anyone. And you could be sitting there in the middle of class, in the middle of work, in the middle of whatever, and just sit there and just... What are you doing? I'm trying to move that thing with the force and you're interrupting me. God damn it! And it makes sense. And there's not a soul, not a soul, who wouldn't know exactly what you're talking about. And if they don't, you know that they're a Russian invader. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no conspiracy theories. But you know, spies. The point is, the point is, I should have said alien instead of Russian invader, because the freaking Russian invaders know exactly what Star Wars is also, and they sit there in the Kremlin talking about, I will move this bottle of vodka that may have been a little bit, you know, bigoted, my bad, I didn't mean that. But you get what I'm saying. Everybody, 
everybody. I promise you right now, Vladimir Putin at some point is sitting there looking at something, talking about, come to me, come, come. <laughs> I don't know why he sounds like Dracula. It's because my accents suck. But you get what I'm saying, dude. Oh my God, you get what I'm saying. We've all tried to do that. And for somebody who, 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 who did a really amazing, talk about, you know, freaking Liam Neeson, did an amazing rendition of this new character that we're just like, oh, Qui-Gon Jinn is the hero that we never knew we needed, but we desperately need it so bad. And then he died at the end of it. Like, God damn it. I'm just saying, just saying that um, it was very disappointing for him to say that. Like, he couldn't attach with us fans. He was pretty much about as big of a jerk as Natalie Portman was with the whole, oh, yeah, I'm going to start these movies, but I will never give any fan service to anybody because psh, screw you, fans. I got my paycheck. Bye. Natalie Portman doesn't appear in any of these events. And, you know, hi, I'm Natalie Portman. I played, uh, you know, I'm a day, uh, Padme Amidala, you know, queen of, mm, she doesn't do that. And neither does freaking Liam Neeson. Neither of them do that. And that's really messed up. I'm just saying that's really messed up. That being the case, when you look back at it, you look at this comic book. This this video, this review got a little bit crazy, right? I'm really freaking exhausted. Um, <laughs> I read this comic book and I see how Liam Neeson's character, Qui-Gon Jinn, was in that movie and reminded of how much I loved his portrayal in that movie, how much I loved his character in that movie. I read this, and I see, again, why he disputed with the, um, the Jedi Council so much. I read this comic book, and I realize that this comic explains Qui-Gon Jinn's character more than the movie did. I read this comic book, and I think to myself, you know, at the end of the day, Qui-Gon was right. The Jedi Council really was wrong. We shouldn't have needed two other movies to prove that. I read this comic book, and I realize that even though I've played all these Star Wars role-playing games throughout my time on this beautiful Earth of ours, where, damn it, things don't really seem to move when you try and sit on and move it. Still... It's a beautiful enough earth. It's pretty. Just can't move things. Um, I, I feel like the Jedi were the real gray Jedi. The Jedi Council were the true gray, gray Jedi. We always said, oh, Qui-Gon is the perfect example of a gray Jedi. No. No. Qui-Gon was an example of the true Jedi. The Council were more like gray Jedi. They were willing to compromise their code, their beliefs, their order, their system, everything. They were willing to compromise the force. They were just a bunch of people who could move things. Damn it, I'm jealous of them. Um, fake characters. <laughs> they were able to move things and use lightsabers and swingy things and stuff like that. But it doesn't mean they were actually Jedi, because they really weren't. They walked the gray path. The truest of the Jedi was Qui-Gon Jinn. That's what I get when I read this book. There's one more thing I get when I read this book that I'm pissed off that this is just a one shot because this should go to 27 issues as opposed to having 27 freaking books out there, 27 one shots. F those one shots. Those one shots might be good, but we're not there yet. We're neither here nor there. We're, we're, we're here. We're not, we're not there. We are here. All right. And I want this to go to 27 issues. I want this to go to however many issues it takes to, I mean, like, how could this comic book not go to 400 issues when you think about it? Because every issue could be a one-shot or so, or just a one-off arc. It doesn't matter. Just keep Qui-Gon Jinn like this. And this would be my favorite story, my favorite Star Wars story that I've ever read. Yeah, it's like that. I started following Jody Hauser um, right before I clicked on this uh click to start this video, I click to follow her because I've only seen her in a couple little one shots here and there. And I'm, oh, I think that if Marvel was smart, all right, honestly, this is real talk. 
man, if I could convince Marvel of one thing, just one, right now, that would be to put Jody Hauser to put this entire team on a full run of this comic book. I would read and review every single issue because, wow, this was so good. I want this story to continue. This story could continue. There was no real resolution to this. There was a there was a very Zen Buddhist sort of ending to this, which I can appreciate also because I studied the martial arts since I was freaking eight years old. You know what I'm saying? And I really got into it. And I tried to move things. <laughs> it was never the idea that physics don't work that way. No, somehow I'm just not connecting to the force the right way. That's what it is. But regardless... <laughs> yeah, man, I, ah, oh, dude, I used to, with one of, one of my senseis, I actually used to have the lightsaber fights. It's like, I'm sorry, do, do you not think I'm a freaking Star Wars fan with the lightsabers on the wall for crying out loud? But it's not the point. It's not the point. This was such an amazing issue. And I'm actually genuinely heated over this. Just a little, just a little, not as much as not being able to move things. But um, I'm genuinely bothered that this is only a one shot. This is kind of criminal. This the Star Wars Darth Vader series did great. I promise you, this could do even better because that's all just evil, and it's like you're just seeing Darth Vader doing all these evil things. But what do we really know about Qui Gon? This could just be just. Go back and just have when he first became a Jedi. Just have him remembering when he first became a Jedi, when he was taking the tests and all these different things, when he was a part of the Academy, when he started to first, you know, disbelieve in the Order and started to kind of veer away, when he first took on, you um, you know, his, his all of his first apprentices. I don't have to sell anybody on this, except Marvel, apparently. Every single person, I believe, who's watching this is saying to themselves, Preach! <laughs> Because, damn it, man, 17 minutes into this? Damn. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap this up. But I'm saying, not saying anything, I'm just saying, this should be a series. Screw this one shot. This should be a series. And I want the same exact creative team on it. Wow. Okay, I'm done. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed. I'm going to try and turn this off using the force. Damn it!